in Britain, we're renowned for our high-end beef. We export about £450 million worth each year, 80% of which currently goes to the EU. Here on the slopes of the chalk downland of East Sussex is Jevington Place Farm. Home to Stephen and Fizz Carr and their 200 Sussex cows. These really are absolutely gorgeous cattle, aren't they? I mean, the Sussex, perfectly fitting. Absolutely. That's where they belong, right in the heart of the county. Yeah, yeah. well, they do look a picture today in the sunshine, don't they? Tell me about their history. Well, we're farming here on the South Downs, but actually the Sussex is far more associated with the north part of the county, up on the High Weald. Not the greatest agricultural land, so quite thin, difficult, heavy soils, not very fertile. And so the Sussex were developed to, to cope with that terrain, really. And they suit your farming system here? They do. The traits of the breed have just suited our organic uh, system, which we've had for the last 10 years. We spread them out very widely. You can see there's not many cattle to quite a large acreage. And they just thrive on this quite scanty grass. Very sweet meat, I think, it produces. No so concentrates, no, no grain. Concentrates, no these, grain. Cows, these cows don't know what, what, a, what a bag of, uh, of, of, of cake looks like. We could shake a bag yeah. at them now and they'd just go, what's that? <laughs> <laughs> you're obviously very proud of them, and I can understand why. But you're in a dilemma now. Um, Brexit, obviously, has cast a shadow over the future of the industry. We've already had two or three years of uncertainty since the referendum result. There's no more clarity now than there was. But this is a long-term uh, long enterprise, a, 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 a bull uh, introduced to a heifer. Um, the, the, the calf is three stroke four years away before it's ready to sell. We don't know if we'll have a market. If there's no market for the beef, then what do you do? You can't carry on farming indefinitely uh, without making some money at it. So how are you deciding what to do with the economics in the balance? We're just taking it one year at a time at the moment. We've just put the bull in. We've decided that we go for it again this year. And then this time next year, we'll review it and see whether we'll do another year. I think that's all we can do, really. A year at a time and keep your fingers crossed. And if it isn't working out, then what? Well, doesn't best think about it, really. No. <laughs> Fizz and Stephen can trace their herd back to 1878. Their cows represent generations of breeding expertise, with animals that are perfectly adapted to producing high-quality meat from poor pasture. I mean, these cattle are part of our living heritage, and be crying shame to see them go. It's, it's, it would just be a, an appalling loss of, uh, of a valuable diversity within farming. To get them ready for market, the beef animals are brought down off the weald to the Pevensey marshes. It's waterlogged in winter, but come summer, its rich grass has been used to fatten cattle since medieval times. It takes around two and a half years from birth to get the cattle into this condition. And it's only now that Stephen can start to weigh up any return on his investment. But the uncertainties of Brexit are looming large on his horizon. And what are the actual threats, then, that could affect the price and the profitability of your cattle? Well, we're protected by tariffs at the moment. There's a tariff of £1.50 for each kilo of meat that will come into the European Union. If the tariff is cut by the 50% that they're suggesting it's going to be, that's therefore going to knock somewhere between two and £300 off each, the value of each beast, depending on its weight. Yeah. And therefore making your business unviable? Absolutely. I, I, I don't think there'd be a farmer in the country that could produce beef with a reduction of that level at a profit. With the World Trade Organization opening up our market, surely you have the possibility of sending our beef abroad? That is optimistic, verging on the mad. <laughs> uh, the idea that uh, the British beef is going to be competitive um, 
uh, in a global market, when indeed at the moment it's relying for its very survival on a tariff that very nearly doubles the value of the cattle that we've got. We are simply not geared to be able to compete in world markets against the likes of, say, Argentina or Brazil. The threat to beef could also affect Fizz and Stephen's other business. Their family run the local pub, and their farm supplies most of the menu. So this is a Sussex beef? Absolutely, yeah. This is it. Gorgeous, isn't it? Grass-fed beautifulness. And what is it that makes the Sussex so special for you? The fact that it is so close to us and the fact that it's converting the downlands into absolutely fantastic, beautiful, marbled beef. It gives us the flavour of the Sussex Downs. But it's not for everybody, is it? Not everyone could afford to eat like this. No, absolutely not. And it's, it's more of a treat. It's a family outing. You know, we'd, we'd like to think that people come here to celebrate their birthday. You know, Granny's having a 90th. You're going to enjoy it. My word, look at that. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> So do you think people should be buying British? Absolutely. I mean, it's here, it's local, you can check the provenance, you can check the animal welfare, you're supporting the whole local food network. So it's not just farmers, it's restaurants, it's cafes. It's been getting so good, that whole local food network, and we really don't want to see that go. If you bring it in from abroad, you don't know if it's, it's at the expense of the animal welfare, you don't know if it's at the expense of the environment, the deforestation. We've got all these wonderful British breeds, of which the Sussex is one, um, all the genetic diversity, all of that could be swept aside by a loss of tariffs, a loss of all the protection that the industry needs. The beef sector, it, it'll go very quickly, and once it's gone, um, almost impossible to get it back. The government have promised specific and robust protections for farming if we leave the EU without a deal. Let's hope standards of British beef are protected so that traditional breeds like the Sussex, as well as the rest of the national beef herd, can continue to be part of our landscape.